Oh, hello. Hey, this is David with Mudslinger Pottery, and I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina on a Tuesday afternoon, and I am working on colanders today. So here's an example of one of the ones I just pulled out of the kiln. And colanders are a little bit different than just throwing a bowl. You've got to really, well I do, you really have to think about it. So when I make a colander, I want it to stand up off the table a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra meat to the bottom of this pot. The other thing is I want the bottom of the pot to be pretty close to the same thickness as the side of the pot. When you cut a hole out of here, you can tell if one's thicker than the other. So I really work at trying to get that thickness on the bottom real close to the same side, same size as the ones on the side. So this is a three pound three pounds of clay. I make them a little bit heavier. I also make the rim just a little bit bigger. I figure if you're pouring something into this, there's a good chance that you're gonna tap it or knock it. And if that rim is a little thin, that's where that pot's gonna chip. So I don't want that happening. I, I really want my pots to be used. And so I think about things like how it's gonna be used. So I've got a couple handles on here got the holes and they're fairly large holes when I started making colanders I made really small holes thinking oh they, they have to be smaller and realized that a little bit larger hole will allow for the glaze to be in there or if you don't want any glaze in there the pots gonna shrink and if that glaze goes in there the holes gonna get smaller too so when you're making when you're making colanders, think about that and add. Just make a little big hole. All right. So let me get down here on the wheel, and we'll get to work. Trying to make a colander. Let's see if I can move this just a little bit here. There we go. All right. So, I like this a little bit wet, just damp. And I am starting with three pounds of speckled brownstone, which is a high water clay out of Asheville, North Carolina. It's a brown clay. And it also has some iron in it, so I'll get a little bit of iron spotting in my glazes, which is nice. It just adds a little bit of something to the pot. So I really want, well, I want every pot to be well centered, but when you're making a colander and you are cutting holes out of the side, it's really obvious if you've not made a good pot. If the walls aren't even. So I really work at getting a nice center and maintaining that center. So we'll open it up here. And like I said before, with a colander I want a little thicker bottom because I want that pot lifted up off the table a little bit. also kind of somewhere for the water to go. So I'm gonna set the floor of this pot and then I'm going to check it with a needle tool. So I can tell right now that's a little too deep, too thick. It's not what I wanted. But I wanted to air on the thicker side first. I can always go deeper, but it's a heck of a lot harder to add clay to the floor of the pot. So I'm gonna thin this out a little bit, and then I will check it again. Okay, so that's that's a little that's a little thick, but that's fine. 
The nice thing about that is if it's thicker, then I'll just have a little, a little taller feet. It'll just lift up a little bit better, which is not a problem. Or I can trim it off either way. But it's much better to, in this, in this instance, to have a little more clay down there than, than not, because I am going to trim it. Okay. So when I'm throwing, I take a damp sponge, not real wet, and just wet the inside of my pot. And then I use the damp sponge to throw on the outside of my pot. And this will lubricate it enough that the clay will slide through my hands and not bind up. And I'm not making a big bowl shape right away. I'm kind of forcing it just up a little bit out because clay will go up, but it will also stretch out. So if I go up a little more inward, when I stretch it out, it'll thin that pot out. Not that I want this pot too thin because it's, it's gonna be used and it's gonna be knocked around, it's gonna be in the sink and I don't want it to get broken. I don't want someone to break it and then say, oh, I need another one. That's, that's not my goal. My goal is to someone to buy it and keep it forever, hand it down to their kids and you know, tell everybody where they got it from and go watch me on YouTube and you know how it is, whatever. So I'm just pulling this up, thinning it out I'm not rushing this because I really want even walls. Like I said before, if, if the walls aren't even on a colander, it's pretty obvious what, what you've done because I'm going to cut holes in the side of this thing and it's going to definitely show if it's too thick down here or if it's thin up top, you'll be able to feel that. So I'm really striving to get a nice pot here, a nice bowl that I can make into a, to a colander. So this clay is probably a little bit firmer than some clays fresh out of the box, which is nice because it'll stand up a little bit better. And I'm not, I'm not pushing it too far not pushing it out too far to create that issue. So I'm really trying to keep my fingers the same distance apart all the way up the side of the pot. And it helps that I am touching my hand as I'm touching the hands together as I'm pulling that, that up. It just gives a little more stability. So this will be the last pull. And once again, I'm pulling some of this in the bottom, really working that and pulling it up. And I'm pulling the pot out a little bit. I want this an open, open bowl so that the noodles or whatever it is you happen to be straining have some place to go. So we'll clean this up, get this line in the bottom cleaned up and smoothed out, compressed. it up just a little bit more. So that's a really nice bowl shape right there. And a lot of my bowls this is basically the same thing but I'm planning on a colander so I have to work towards that. Now one of the tricks I use and I, I learned this from a, a friend who would take credit cards and he would cut them into different shapes and patterns 
and I just cut, actually I just drilled a hole in this and then cut it off on the front so that it creates that semicircle, half, half circle, kind of like a fish with his mouth open. And what I can do is I can set this in the bottom of my pot to create a really nice round foot ring that it looks like this pot is sitting on. And when I glaze, I don't glaze that foot ring. So it'll be a different color, but it allows me a spot that I will glaze to. So I can glaze right to that line. And if the glaze runs a little bit, I'm usually pretty, I'm usually okay with it because it won't run over the side of that, that rounded edge. So now my, my other trick is a stiff metal rib. This is a stainless steel rib. You can see how thin it is. And it will keep that edge, probably get better over time if anything, unlike uh, a wooden rib that, if I can grab one here, you can see it. The wooden rib will lose its edge. It'll change over time. So you can see how this, the rib used to have a, a ridge running down the center and now it's kind of off to the side and it just doesn't work as well as it used to. So the stiff metal rib will allow me to get down in here, really compress it. It helps me to make more even, thinner walls because you can basically trim your pot on the wheel when it's wet. And these, these ribs have, have that nice edge, so it will just trim that clay off, clean it up, compress it, and shape it. So I've, I've noticed that since I started using these, my pots are a lot more even and the walls are thinner, which is kind of what we're all shooting for, isn't it? You want a pot that has that visual weight to it. You know, when you look at a pot, you kind of have an idea of what you think it should weigh. And if you pick it up and it's too light, it's a surprise. And if you pick it up and it's too heavy, it's, it's kind of a disappointment, at least it is for me. Fix up the bottom here, because I touched it when I shaped it. So that's the basic shape. I will take a rib, if I can find it. <laughs> I lost my red rib somewhere. Oh well. I don't need it. Okay, so since this is a colander and you're gonna be pouring things into it, I want this to, to flare out a little bit. I don't want it kind of coming in because then if you're pouring it, it's more likely to spill out the sides. So what I'll do is use a chamois that I've got right here. And I will just put this on the edge of my pot on the rim and I can just stretch that out. And this creates that more open bowl, better able to receive whatever it is you might have to pour into that. So that's the basic shape. I am going to clean up the inside here. Just so I get some nice even walls, compress them a little bit, 
and I'm also pulling it out just a little bit. Get the uh, water out of the bottom of my pot. Never a good thing to be water sitting in the bottom of your pot. And I need to touch this up just a little bit because I've touched it. And then the last thing I do before I wire it off is I will alter this just a little bit by creating four corners on this pot. So the top looks a little square, it's a little squared off. It just adds a little bit of design to that pot and just changes it. It just it makes it different from the guy next to you who's selling a round colander. And it also, for me, it creates that spot where I can put a handle on there. Let me cut this off and I will show you that completed pot. Okay, so some of the tips for uh, making a colander. Really work at getting even walls because it's going to be obvious when you start cutting holes in here if the walls are not even. Uh, make it a little thicker. Make a nice thicker rim. That's where it's going to get touched and and maybe hit with another pot. So there it is. And like I said, here's here's my other one, and you can see how it's squared off. And it gives me a nice spot and a nice size to put that handle in there. So I hope that helped you. This has been David with Mudslinger Pottery here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And you can see me on Instagram at Mudslinger Pottery. And if you have any questions, please uh, hit me up. Love to help people out. I know I, I wished I'd asked more questions when I was starting out and instead of trying to figure it out all on my own. Because I've made all the mistakes you can with a colander and Maybe I can help you to avoid some of those. So this has been David with Mudslinger Pottery here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, hit a thumbs up, help me out on YouTube. So thanks a lot. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Bye.